So, in this box, we have the latest and greatest spec chasing bait finesse reel on AliExpress. But in this box, we have the first DC bait finesse reel in 15 years. So can you guess which one we're going to do the unboxing and analysis of in this video? Now if you guess this new High Star Aurora Air, don't be silly. I've been waiting on a DC bait finesse reel for well over 10 years. And since Shimano won't give us one, we are going with the Long Z Airlite DC. So let's get started. Now, the Long Z rep sent this to me. I didn't buy it. And I don't know if it comes in a regular box or not, or if it just comes in this case. But this case is nice. And let's get to it. Okay comes in a velvet bag. Pow! Oh wow. Look at this thing. And this thing is is tiny. And the coating Feels really, really nice in hand. Feels real smooth, but not slick. And this thing is smooth. And obviously you can see I chose the color gold. Let you guys take a good look at this. Now everything on this reel is gold pretty much except for a couple little pieces here and there. Man, this thing is super lightweight as well. Let you guys take in all the all the components here. I'm gonna move all this crap out of the way. Check out the knobs. Full tension. Okay, so the thumb bar is not metal. Soak in all the details. Wow. Now I was never into round reels even round BFS reels even though I have a couple of uh, Conquest BFS's and I had a Conquest 50 DC which was technically not a bait finesse reel but man this reel kinda makes me a fan alright now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to chit chat with the Long Z rep really really study this reel on their website do my customary analysis and of course I will get back to you alright so my lengthy inspection is over and it's time to deep dive into this beautiful reel but before we begin I just want to make a correction and that is the thumb bar turns out this is made of aluminum not plastic so pretty much this entire reel is made of metal with the exception of this button right here but let us begin now the first thing I want to say is that when I opened up that box or that case that the reel came in I was so happy that this reel color is that really deep rich gold kind of like a 24 karat gold color not that light champagne 14 karat gold that Shimano uses 
and yeah I really really love this color now I kind of wish they could have broken it up a little bit with some silver or maybe black here and there but I am perfectly fine with all this gold either way now the reel is kind of based off of a hybrid design of the old and new conquest you can see they're using the current design of the current conquest on the palm side plate but on the other side it is pretty much almost just like the previous conquest and yes they are using the S compact design that Shimano uses where the palm side is slightly smaller than the handle side and you can barely tell but yeah it is a little bit shorter than the gearbox side and this reel is tiny I did mount it on a few rods and it is really really comfortable to palm very much like the current conquest BFS so let's check out some of the machining details on this reel now the first thing you see is this machine top plate where it's really flat nice place to rest your thumb but the machining on the top is very unusual and it looks like an L and a Z something that I noticed and back to the thumb bar you can see that they machine some little indentions here I guess to help aid you with grip now the thumb bar is rock solid no slop no play very positive engagement and let's take a look at this handle this has got to be the best skeletal handle design I've ever seen on a stock reel so you can see that they milled out a whole bunch of material and I like that and it's symmetrical it's not asymmetrical so that means this top arm is the same thickness as the bottom arm if you look from the top it's thick here and it gets thinner as it goes out and it's swept and they have that flush nut design very Daiwa-esque and the nut and retainer screw are silver and take a look at this drag star very very ported very good looking design also very Daiwa-esque when you look at it from the side very positive refined clicks and let's check out these knobs and when I first saw these knobs in pictures I didn't know if I would like them or not because I don't like this spiral design but they are comfortable now of course they're metal so they're gonna be cold in the winter but there's just a tiny bit of in and out play but when you're cranking the handle you definitely you don't feel it very very smooth and solid and refined and check out the end caps look at that now for some reason if you wanted to swap out this handle or even just knobs Long Z actually gave you a special tool that has everything you need to swap it out even if you want to take off these knobs because if you look at this tool it's got these little raised areas and they fit right into these holes just like that then you screw them off so that was a very thoughtful touch by Long Z to include this tool and it's made of aluminum very light but uh, yeah very attractive looking handle drag star and knobs now let's check out the spool tension now it's very Shimano-esque in its design you can see it's pretty much all gold I don't know is that a silver band in there I can't really tell but they have their logo in silver I guess that's an L and a Z but it does click and they are micro clicks so that means they're 
is not a lot of space in between clicks, not a lot of uh, dead space like you'll find in uh, other reels. Now the clicks are muted and they don't feel super positive versus let's say a Daiwa spool tension that clicks in some of their old designs, but it is very quality feeling nonetheless. Now it could be a little bit bigger in my opinion, but I understand why they went with a small design, which we'll get into later. And the last thing we're going to do as we check this reel out, I'm going to show you all the little machining details. So I showed you the thumb bar, showed you the holes on the palm side plate, and you can see that there's a plastic insert that's blue. It's kind of cool. And look at all the machining they did on the spool. It's very, very ported in a honeycomb pattern. And even the spool walls, very reminiscent of the Abu Garcia Revo MG Extreme and the previous generation Shimano MGL. And then even look right there. There's a bunch of little holes they drilled. I'm not sure why, but that looks very precision in my opinion. But yeah, overall, this reel is built extremely well, very solid. See, I'm shaking it and I, I hear no noises at all. And while I wouldn't say that the machining is quite as intricate and detailed as, let's say, the current Shimano Conquest, it's still a great effort overall for a first reel. Of course, this is based off of their non-DC air light reel. Now the last bit of machining detail I'm going to show you guys is going to be on the real foot. You can definitely see the machine marks, hopefully. And they really milled out this real foot. So in case you're wondering, there's a company that just recently come out on the scene here in America and all their low profile bait casters are machined aluminum that's their claim to fame apparently all their reels are machined and made by long z so that's something to think about now before we get to the specs and features of this reel i just want to make a quick announcement or i guess a quick update and that is that this reel is going to be renamed the, I guess, Airlight DBC instead of DC. And I got this directly from one of uh, Lungzi's reps. And I guess Shimano has a trademarked DC in China. So that's probably why they are going with DBC, which stands for Direct Brake Control. Now let's get to these specs and features. Of course, we've already went over that this pretty much entire reel is made out of machined aluminum all the way down to its thumb bar. It's packing a whopping 13 bearings, and I think two of them might be some kind of special spool bearings. I'll have to do more research into that. But currently, it only comes in a 7.1 gear ratio. If you check out the size of this spool, this is not the average bait finesse small diameter spool but we're going to get more into that later and this is really important the airlight dbc is going to be sporting a finesse tuned drag so that means it tops out at only 8.8 .8 pounds so this seems like it was pretty much designed from the ground up as a bait finesse reel and not the other way around where they took an existing reel and gave it the bfs treatment now being a premium product, everything on this reel clicks. Of course, we already went over the clicking drag star. Feels very, very mainstream. Of course, we went over the clicking spool tension. Nice micro clicks. And of course, a lot of you guys are gonna love this. The Airlight DBC does have a clicking drag and it's kind of like in between a really loud and a really muted drag 
and yeah, it feels very, very refined. The one thing they focused on was pushing the line guide out as far as possible, like the Conquest, and I think, I can't really tell if it has a wider opening. I think it does. Like the Conquest, I think the opening to the line guide might be wider than the exit, but don't quote me on that. But that's very important since this is a shorter round wheel instead of a longer, lower, low profile where you can really poke the line guide out versus a round reel. And one awesome feature of this Airlite DBC as well as their regular Airlite reel is that this reel comes in multiple color options. So of course, we got this nice deep gold, which I'm going to refer to as 24 karat. Then we have your standard silver if you want to cosplay as a Conquest BFS. They have purple if you want something that's a little more bright and draws more attention. And that's something I brought up many, many years ago when I first started my channel was that I think the future of reels is going to be being able to pick a custom color or pick from a variety of different colors and it looks like with this Lungzi DBC reel as well as their non-digital brake reel they are giving you that option so hint hint Shimano anyway before we get to what really makes this reel special let's do a really really quick size comparison So obviously the only real competition for the Airlite DBC is going to be the round reel benchmark and that of course is Shimano's Calcutta Conquest BFS version. Now this is just going to be a quick size comparison between the two and that's because I have an entirely separate video plan comparing both of these reels. Right, I'm going to try to line up the reel seats and you can see they're very very similar in size. Now from this angle or this position the air light looks a little bit bigger but let's go ahead and swap and from this position looks like the air light is a little bit smaller. So it's just a trick of the camera but I did mount both of these reels on the same rod and palmed them side by side and I'll go over my thoughts in the special air light DBC versus Conquest BFS video. Now it's time to get into the two things that really, really make this Airlite DBC special. So the first thing that makes the Airlite DBC special is supposed to be its weight, or more specifically, lack of weight. So to illustrate this point, of course, we're going to weigh its main competition first, Shimano's Conquest BFS. And it comes in at 6.9 ounces. So now the Airlite DBC comes in at 5.25 ounces. So that's right on the money according to Lungzi's website. And I believe the non DC version of this reel, just the normal Airlite, is even lighter, coming in at like sub 5 ounces, which is pretty incredible considering this reel is pretty much all aluminum right down to its thumb bar. And you can definitely feel the difference in weight picking them up one right after the other. So before we deep dive into the brake system, of course, we're going to have to get a weight and get the details on this spool. Now, in order to access the spool, you look at the bottom and you can see, hopefully, it's very faint, but there's an arrow that's pointing this way. Now for all you lefties, I'm sure it's probably pointing the opposite way, but just look at the direction the arrow is pointing, and that's the way you're going to turn this side plate. And it just screws right off. Pow, look at that. So you can see that the brake module is very, very Shimano-like. But we're going to lay this off to the side. We're going to pull this spool out. All right, let's check this out. So it's super ported. Look at all the holes and metal machined out of this spool. 
short spool shaft. I think the spool shaft looks to be aluminum. Of course, there's a little spool bearing. There's your, what I assume to be the electromagnet attached to the spool shaft. And you can see that even though the spool is shallow by today's standards, it's a little bit deeper than the, I guess, current average BFS spool, but that's okay. Now, of course, I'm going to pull out my special spool scale. Now on Lungzi's website, they actually state that the weight of this spool is 10 and a half grams. All right, so let's see what the scale says. 10 and a half grams. And that's with the spool bearing. So assuming this spool bearing doesn't look to be a five by 11 by four, let's assume that the spool bearing is one gram. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. Wait, hold on a second. Never mind. there's an O-ring that I do not want to mess with. Hopefully you guys can see that little black ring. It's a rubber O-ring that I have to take off, but assuming this spool bearing is like one gram, so you're looking at a nine and a half gram spool, which by today's standards is extremely heavy for bait finesse, but this spool is 34 millimeters in diameter. So for the size of this spool, considering the fact that you have that electromagnet on it, the spool weight is actually very, very good. 10 and a half grams with the bearing. And just for context, what you see here is a factory Shimano Carta 50 DC spool. Now don't ask me why I have this without having a Carta 50 DC, but you can see that the braking mechanism is very similar, but there's far less, I guess, braking mechanism on the air light. But the spool of the Cardiff 50 DC weighs a whopping 16.3 grams. So about nine and a half, 16.3. And you can see there's a huge size difference there. This spool, I think is like 29 millimeters. So Shimano was the first company to, I guess, give us a sub 30 millimeter spool, not Daiwa, but Daiwa just took it to the extreme of going down one millimeter to 28. But you can see just how far technology has come just by looking at the brake mechanisms. Now, before we get into the brakes, I wanna show you guys how to put the side plate on correctly. Of course, you slide the spool in, seat the bearing, so since the arrow was telling us to turn it clockwise to loosen, we're going to turn it counterclockwise, of course, to tighten it up. And don't be in a hurry and just really quickly twist this side plate. What happens is you're gonna feel the side plate stop twisting if you're attaching it or twisting it with just moderate pressure. And as soon as you feel that pressure and it doesn't move anymore, stop. Now, if you're like me, I actually tightened the side plate even more and it made it almost impossible to take off. I went through great measures with tape and this and that to finally loosen the side plate. But you'll know that you're perfectly aligned because the DC logo is going to be perfectly level with the real foot. So when I tightened it too much, this logo was actually slanted at an angle. But yeah, for those of you who are going to get this real, hopefully you see this and you don't tighten your side plate too much. So now let's get into this amazing brake system. Now remember that preview video I did on this reel a couple of weeks ago where the guy was casting it around and this little button on the side was lighting up? Let me see if I can make this button light up for you guys. There you go. And I don't know if you guys can hear. It's making a little whining noise. So yeah, let's talk about this DBC brake system. From my study of this system, it pretty much combines all the strengths of Shimano's digital control and Daiwa's intelligent mag force with none of their weaknesses. So just like Shimano's digital control, this reel needs no charging. It self recharges on each cast. 
and it also makes a nice little cool casting noise just like Shimano's DC reels but if you want to you can turn the sound off so there is no noise or digital noise during the cast which you can't do with Shimano's DC reels now where it's similar to Daiwa is that this reel uses an app that does connect by Bluetooth but unlike Daiwa you don't need to recharge the battery in order to use the system and I have no clue how they did that I don't know how they power the Bluetooth with just the charge of the casts so if that's true this is really next level stuff and also like Daiwa on the reel it only has one button that lights up different colors and just like Daiwa you can actually fish this reel and make brake adjustments with just this one button without the need of using the app and with that being said I'm going to show you a video by Lungzi that shows you just how to do that Okay, so hopefully you guys saw in that video that there are five brake modes on this reel and those brake modes are all color coded. And to access each brake mode, you have to, I guess, long press this button like four seconds. So let me see if I can demonstrate that for you guys. Okay, so I just hit the button once and the light flashed. So I assume that means the brakes are on. And let me long press this. All right, so after four seconds, the button lit up blue. And according to Long Z, that means we're in master mode. So let's long press this button again. Okay, so it lit up turquoise, which I think is cyan. So that means we are in all around mode. All right, so let's long press again. One, two, three, four. And it's lit up purple. So that means we are in bait finesse mode. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three, four and i guess that's yellow it looks kind of green to me but there's no green on the color code chart so if that's yellow that means we're in win mode which is pretty self-explanatory and then let's do one last time and that's supposed to be red which is training mode <laughs> That's pretty funny, training mode. So I like the way that Long Z has labeled these modes, master mode, all around mode, bait finesse mode, wind mode, training mode. And I'm assuming master mode is probably gonna be the least amount of breaks for really long casting if you have the skill to do so. All around mode is probably what most people are gonna use and probably has a stronger breaking profile than master mode and then of course, BFS mode is going to have an even stronger brake profile for the light baits. Wind mode might have an even stronger brake profile or maybe a little bit different brake profile. And then training mode is probably going to be the strongest brake profile for beginners. Now, according to the video, once you're in your desired brake mode, each mode has four different levels. And you access or change each level by pressing the button for like two or three seconds. So I think we're in training mode and I guess the button or light is supposed to blink like four times if you're in the number four setting, three times for the three, two for the two, one for the one, et cetera, et cetera. So let's try that out. All right. So I'm going to change brake mode real quick. 
All right, so we're in blue, so that's master mode. So obviously you can't flip from, let's say, master mode and go directly to BFS mode, which kind of is an inconvenience, but oh well. So now we're in master mode. I'm gonna assume we are automatically in the number four setting. Okay, I get it now. Okay. So this little red dot that's very faint, I believe that is the number one setting. So basically, you can't really pause in between. Well, you can't have a really long pause when you're trying to get to a certain setting. So if you want to go from four to one, you're going to have to, you know, press it two or three seconds, watch the blink, press it again. You can't sit there and wait like 30, 40 seconds. So hopefully you guys saw that the strength of the light or how bright it is, is going to diminish the lower you go in the brake setting. So I think that's pretty much like Daiwa's Intelligent Mag Force. Now I'm not going to go too much into the app. I'm going to wait until I take this out on the water and cast it around. And we're going to try to cast this with and without the app. But that's pretty much how you set the brakes. It's actually pretty simple. Now, the question is, how effective are they? We'll find out in the next video. All right. So we're going to wrap up this video by going over my final initial impressions of the reel, go over its price and where you can get it. But before we do that, I'm going to give some suggestions to Lungzi, which I told him I was going to do. Now, the first thing is that while I know that Shimano's Conquest was the target reel to compete against with the Airlight, I would suggest not try to copy their design too much. So you can see with the palm side plate, they're going with, you know, the single holes that get bigger as they go around and then get smaller, which is just like Shimano's current Conquest. I personally would have went with an original design. I know it's probably easier just to copy the design of a successful reel, but you don't want to be known as the Shimano Conquest copy. You want to forge your own path in the world of tackle. And number two is the badging. Now the badging is on the outside of the reel, so this probably could get scratched up and even scratched off. You probably wanted to put the badging underneath the gloss coating, but Lung DC, I probably wouldn't put Lung there. I would probably have put Airlight, as that word is more, I guess, internationally friendly. Even though I'm pretty sure that the majority of the reels are probably going to be sold in China, but that's just a suggestion from an American angler. And another suggestion is that while this reel is that nice rich 24 karat gold color, I probably would have broken up a lot of this gold with some silver. Maybe make the spool silver, maybe the thumb bar. Got a little bit of silver there, but put some silver around, maybe the drag star base or even the spool tension and maybe just like Shimano does, they anodize the little angles there of the machining silver. But that's just my personal preference. A lot of you guys out there might like the monotone color scheme. And the last thing is to know your target demographic. Now I bring this up because when I was talking to the Long Z rep, we were discussing potentially sending this reel out to me. She told me that she had to talk with her, I guess, manager first. And her manager wanted to know what my TikTok was. And like, I'm old, I don't have a TikTok. I don't even watch TikTok. I know it's a social media app that you upload like really short videos, like a minute or less, but isn't that targeted for children? So the person who is gonna be interested in a reel like this, especially at its price, 
is going to be someone like me. Someone who's older, who's got a profession, and has disposable income. So when we're looking to buy anything, whether it be fishing reels or just anything, I'm pretty sure, I speak for a lot of us, but I don't go to TikTok to look for real reviews. And I don't watch YouTube shorts to look for real reviews. I look for channels that'll post long videos giving me details of the product and also showing the product in action. So anyone who is on TikTok, I don't think they're going to be in the market for a reel this expensive, which leads us to the price. Now, the Airlight DBC, according to Lungzi's website, retails for $339. So if you thought this reel was going to be like 100, 150 bucks, maybe even $200, you'd be wrong. Now with the price of $339, this puts it pretty much within a few dollars of Shimano's Conquest BFS, depending on where you buy it from. I've seen them as low as $320 and as high as like $380. But what I think might be the true competitor for this reel is going to be Shimano's Conquest 100DC, which retails anywhere from $420 upwards to $500. And remember, this reel has got the big 34 millimeter spool can hold plenty of uh, light line and it should be able to bomb out some long casts with some upper end BFS lures. I don't think this reel is designed to throw trout magnets. So do I think this reel is worth $339 so far? Well honestly when you combine the fact that the reel is made so well and that it's so lightweight it's very smooth very refined and you combine it with the more versatile bigger spool and the digital brakes so far I'm gonna say yes I mean your only other option for a DC BFS reel is to go on eBay and see if you can find like a worn out Cardiff 50 DC that selling for like eight or nine hundred bucks so there's gonna be a link once again in the comment section it's gonna take you to Don Kuhn Fishing and it's gonna show you where you can purchase this reel so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to mount this reel on the rod and we're going to go out and do some casting. And we're also going to see if the app is functional enough to be able to use out on the water. So be on the lookout for that. Alright guys, thanks a lot.